Welcome to Broadcast is Love. We have on an exciting guest today, Kristen Turner. Hey, Kristen. Hey. I'm so excited to talk to you because we're talking about a subject that I think everyone wants to know about, which is hearing from God. Right? Right. Yes. Right. Like, I want to hear from God. You want to hear from God. And yes. just when was the first time that you heard from God? How was that experience for you? That is a great question. And uh, I think a lot when I talk with people now, they just assume this has been my life for a long time. But I came up and grew up in a, a, a church tradition that didn't think or didn't talk about God speaking to us. In fact, they taught that um, some of the more miraculous spiritual gifts uh, aren't in effect today, that that was for the New Testament church and not for us, which as I've dug deeper in scripture, I, I don't agree with that anymore. So it kind of led to this. And I, and I had um, a community and a family that was all about seeking the Lord's will. And, and so we talked in things like, um, how do you know what to do? I want God's guidance on something. Well, I, I just have a piece about this or something like that. There was a sense of you wanted to seek God's guidance and his will, but there was no real sense of how to do that other than you'd read your Bible and you'd pray, but maybe his answer came in a, in a peace in your heart or something like that, which as I was thinking about this morning, I'm like, most of the time when I hear the Lord now, there's anything but peace in my heart. Oh, okay. it's actually, you know, with a lot of, oh my goodness, in excitement and, uh, or even if he's calling me to do something, there's maybe even, um, fear in that, mm. but it's not, you know, it, it's a fear that needs to be overcome, but it, right. it's not necessarily a peaceful, warm, oh, it, it feels good and peaceful to change my life for the Lord. It's more, I, I would describe it more as a solid feeling, like this is what the Lord wants to do. Anyway, so okay. grew up with a lot of confusion on this and probably about nine to 10 years ago, uh, and this is, I was living in Texas at the time, got involved in a church that believes that the Lord speaks clearly to us today. And as I got around these people and started just hearing their experiences and hearing more from them and learning about how God speaks to us, I started kind of perking up in my ears and starting to hear him more clearly. Okay. And, um, you know, and this also kind of comes from a history of wanting to know him deeply, right? Right. So we want Jesus like that. We want Jesus. That's the thing. Like we're listening to this podcast because we want to grow closer to Jesus. So the want is there. Right. right. And I think one of the keys in learning to hear from him is also realizing that Jesus feels the same about us. Yes. He wants to know yes. us. Um, I mean, he knows this inside and out, but he wants to have that um, relationship with us that is intimate, not just a off distant God who um, is obscure or hard to reach. I mean, that's the whole reason he died for us, right? He right. saved us from our sins so that we could have an abundant life with him and be in connection with him. Yes. So, um, so as I was in this community, the first thing was I just started asking, Lord, I want to hear your voice more clearly. Yes. Clearly you're speaking to all these people around me, right? So clearly. I want to be one of those people. I mean, uh, everybody is relating right now. Cause how many times do you hear a pastor say, I heard from God. It's like, okay. That's awesome. I want those special right. powers, you know? Right. I want that. Yeah. Don't you love me, Lord? Yes. yes. And the answer is yes. He loves you that much. So, you know, and he asked the first time I remember hearing from the Lord in, in more of a, um, like a speaking kind of way. Mm -hmm. And it's such a silly story because I, I was in the shower. I actually hear from the Lord a lot in the shower, probably because yes. I'm alone, you know, and without distraction. And you're a mom. And, so there's peace. Like nobody's <laughs> grabbing you at that moment. You right. Know? Exactly. So I was in the shower and, you know, as a woman, it came to that time, do I shave my legs? Do I not shave my legs? I'm like, nah, I'm not going to do it today. And I heard this voice that said, you should shave your legs. Silly, right? And no. I'm like, and it wasn't like, not an audible voice. It's a thought, you know, it's a yes. thought in my head. And I went, nah, there's no reason to, I'm not going to. And I didn't. And later that day I had an appointment that I didn't realize what's going to include like reflex reflexology on my feet. So, like 
they're kind of embarrassed that my legs are a little prickly. I'm like, Lord, that was you. I mean, as I'm laying here having this person rub my feet, I'm yes. like, God, that was you. You were telling me yes. I should shave my legs because you care enough about me that I, you didn't want me to be embarrassed in this moment. And so that was kind of the first little foray into that. And so then it, I'm like, okay, Lord, talk to me more, talk yes. to me more. And so, and I started recognizing those little thoughts that would come in that weren't from me, that were Mm. from him. And I remember thinking it it always would take some time. Like I'd have the thought kind of, you know, push it aside. And then a little while later, I'd look back and be like, oh God, that was you. You, that was you telling me this because you wanted me to be prepared for this. Right. And so then my prayer changed to, all right, Lord, let me recognize in the moment yes. instead of after I've passed it. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> yes. Let me recognize it. I love yes. how you just said, let me stop and pray the simple prayer. Let me recognize it. Okay. I'm with yes. you. Yes. So, um, so then I started acting more on those thoughts that seemed to come from nowhere that I didn't feel like were coming from me. And um, that, it just started to recognize his voice more clearly. And and like I said, it was, you know, you think, oh, well, if the Lord is going to speak to me, he's going to give me some big, important message. Well, shave your legs isn't really an important message to the world. That was just yes. for me because he loves me that much. So, um, so then I just started to kind of recognize more just what he sounds like and, and how he talks to me and how it feels when he talks to me. Um, so, and then it grows from there, but let's, let's talk about maybe some foundation biblically for that's what I'm talking about. sister. And this yes. is why we have you on to talk about <laughs> hearing from God. So first of all, Kristen Turner, how did this happen where we're having this conversation? My friend, Christine kid. Yes. And then my other friend, Ginger, both yes. have been debris who have both been on this podcast, solid women of faith, scripture yes. based women, you know? They both said, I needed to have you on. And Christine's like, you've got to talk about how to hear from God because we want to know, like we want to hear from the guy who created everything. So a scripturally sound, oh my gosh, thank you. Let's go girl. Take it away. Let's go. Absolutely. excited. And kind of one of my favorite passages of scripture for, should I actually expect to hear from the Lord is John 10. Okay. And in John 10, he, Jesus is talking and he's uh, comparing himself to the perfect shepherd, the ideal shepherd. And he's using a, you know, an analogy that the people he is talking to completely understand and get because shepherds are everywhere yes. in their community, you know, um, and they understand that when a lamb is born, like the shepherd would put it over his shoulders and carry it for days so that lamb would learn to hear his voice. Mm. Then when it grows older, all those sheep are following after the shepherd because they recognize his voice. And it's almost like, you know, when you were a little kid and you were out in public, like for me, my dad had a very strange whistle, like, and it sounded like nobody else's whistle. And we knew it was him and we would know to find him or listen, or, you know, you learn to hear, you recognize voices, voices, each sound different. We each have our own voice. And so part of, learning to hear from the Lord is just spending time listening and learning what his tone, what his, uh, what he sounds like and what he says. Right. So anyway, in John 10, three times he says, basically my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And so to me, there's, there's, he's, it's biblically there. We know his voice. It's, we know him. It comes from relationship. Right. And, Yes. It's a spirit thing too. I want to be clear. Like when we're running on self will, like, uh, this is what I have to do. I have to do this. I need to go. I need to do. Um, and we're not running on the spirit of God of him leading us and like him asking, you know, us asking him, like God lead me into this, you know, surrendering all to him. Like this is a difference. So if, if you're listening to Kristen right now and you're confused, I just want you to like, um, take down the walls of being led by the spirit. So right now we're talking about being led by the spirit. So go ahead, the Holy spirit. (laughs) 
not any yes. other kind of spirit. Right. Only the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, so the other part of that, that, and this is more, um, not necessarily picking out a verse that talks about it, but, you know, we all, I think in, in our Christian growth, talk about how we want to be more like Jesus. And yes. that's the goal, right? To be right. like Jesus. Well, over and over again, Jesus says, I only do what I see the father doing. I only say what I yes. hear the father saying. And so he uh, models this relationship of being in such communication and contact with the father that his every word, his every action is guided by what the father's doing and saying. And so, so that also became my prayer. Lord, I only want to do what I see you doing. And I only want to say what I hear you saying. And, um, and so I think, you know, once again, it just goes back to that Jesus models that we should be listening uh, to the Lord and, and what he is doing and saying. Mm. So I think just a basic biblical principle is that when we belong to Jesus, we get to hear his voice. It, it's part of the package. It comes with it. When we are in Jesus, he is speaking to us. When we are with Jesus, he's speaking to us in yeah. Jesus, in Jesus all the time. Yes. It's part of the package. It's part of the package. It's part of that salvation package. So, and it's yeah, just part yeah. of it. I just love so, anyway. how you keep it so simple because getting ready for this conversation, I'm like, I know that I pray to you, God. I know that I seek you and I want you and I just want to do right. I'm going to do good by you. But I think what I'm realizing in this conversation is God's been talking to me the whole time. Yes. Yes. And he is, he's, uh, I've heard it described like radio frequencies. Like even when you don't have your radio turned on, there are radio waves going through your house, right. And through the air, there's the music is always playing. It's just, do you have your radio turned on and tuned in to the frequency yeah. to hear the music that's playing? And I think it's it's this a uh, very similar with with God. God is always, I think, speaking to us. Yes. It's just are we tuned in to Him so that we can hear what He's saying? Um, and we can talk. Let's talk a little bit more about that. I think. Yes. Are we tuned another, in to Jesus? Go, girl. Yes. <laughs> I think it's important to understand that God also He speaks to us out of intimacy. So, I mean this is one of those things that just blows my mind over and over again is how much God loves me. And, and I, and, and part of it also just comes from, you know, I think back when I was a kid and a young adult, I thought about God as very distant and, you know, I had to live up to a standard, uh, even as a believer in Jesus, I felt like there was still the standard that I had to live up to and I couldn't mess up and I couldn't do wrong because that's why he died to save me was so that I would be good enough for him. Mm -hmm. And that's just not true. I mean, it, it's not the truth of it. The truth is Jesus died because he loves us so much that he wants to have relationship with us. Yes. And he, um, and God, I mean, you think just all this, I did it talk for a long time about identity too, about how oh. God created each one of us in such a special and precise way. And each one of us in our own personhood reflects a facet of the Lord. Wow. And Even people we don't like. <laughs> yes. But you reflect that more beautifully, I guess, when you are in the Lord and, yes. you know, being who he created you to be. Yes. So, uh, but yes, even the people you don't like, yes, are reflecting and maybe they are a person of, you know, you just don't quite get along with them to start right. thinking about them as there is, they are a facet reflecting the personhood of God. Yes. It makes you look at them differently, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It so, makes the conversation go different too. Yes. That's Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit. Yes. That's Jesus. Um, so in any relationship, communication is key, right? You, yes. In a marriage, you have to know how to communicate with your spouse to have a healthy, good, strong marriage. Yes. In a friendship, you need to know how to communicate with your friend in order to have a healthy, strong friendship. Mm -hmm. The same is true with the Lord. We can't have a relationship with him if we're not communicating with him. And communication is always two-way. Um, is it? Otherwise, it's... <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> 
<laughs> your husband would disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Sorry, it's two way. No, you're fine. So teach me. So. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's just, it's real. It's just real. Uh, yeah. There's nothing else. You can't bring you anything else. So, all right. so, <laughs> so it's two ways. It's two Let ways. me write that down. Hold on. I'm just kidding. Okay. So no, I'm listening. Yes. Communication is two ways. So we should expect, you know, we should expect nothing less in our communication with the Lord. Yes. And, um, prayer should be two ways. We are both speaking to him and listening to him. Um, and that's, you know, that's part of the challenge too, right? Because we right. want communication to be one way. Yes. But it is two ways. Yes. And so the challenge is stopping and listening. So you just got to be a good listener. You got to become a better listener. Yes. And so that is both a gift and a skill. Like God has given us the gift to hear his voice but it's a skill in that we have to learn to develop it. Mm. Um, and there are some, and how do you develop that? Really? You spend time with them. That's how you learn to hear his voice. And there are three main ways you spend time and with the Lord and learn to hear from him. And, um, they're just, I mean, they're not going to be surprising. It is you read your Bible. Yes. Um, which is so good. one of the most important things about learning to hear from the Lord, because it is a clear representation of his voice and how he sounds. So when the Lord is speaking to you, he's never going to contradict scripture because that is his written word. Uh, so the things that you hear from the Lord can't contradict scripture. If what you are hearing does contradict scripture, right. that's not God. Right. If it's not um, to uh, you know, if it's like breaking the law, you know, I mean, or I'm thinking like the worst of the worst right now. So excuse or, me, but that's not what the Lord is saying. And our foundation is scripture. So yeah. that's huge. Like maybe you need to be humbled. <laughs> just kidding. I have to be humbled all the time. So I'm preaching to the choir, but I'm just saying, if you're feeling these feelings, like what Kristen is encouraging you to do is just get into God's word because he does want goodness for you. Um, anyway, sorry. Yeah, that was a tangent, but yes. No, you're good. Well, you know, if if the voice you're hearing in your head is telling you things like, uh, "You can't do this. You're not good enough for this," mm. or um, "You're not going to measure up," that's not God, because mm -hmm. Scripture says there's no condemnation in Jesus. Yes. Or so if the voice you're, or even if it's saying you messed up, mm -hmm. and I can't believe that, and would I what am I going to do with you? You've messed up. That's not God. God doesn't right. speak that way. Mm -hmm. He may say, Ooh, that was not a good choice. How about we do this? You know, there's, there's a difference when the Lord convicts us of wrongdoing. Right. There's no condemnation of you're a bad person because you did this. It's, Ooh, that's not you. That's not who I created you to be. Mm. I created you for more and you yes. are more than that. Yes. Um, Parents, so, listen up. That's good instruction too. It is. Kiddos. It's a way to speak yes. to your children too. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, I could talk about that too and, and how that has saved my bacon on some days. Um, I mean, you can, I mean, it's an open space. So if you want to share a nugget, we'll take the advice. Yes. Okay. Because parenting is hard. I don't, I, I don't know yes. if anybody would like to contradict that. It's yes. just hard. Jesus help me. Um, yeah. Yes. So several years ago, I have, I have two boys. Um, and my older one was really struggling with, um, homework and he was also, he had, he has ear issues too. He was struggling with an ear infection. And so okay. and he had told the doctor that he could swallow a pill. So this is all kind of in the same conversation. And we had had like just weeks of head bedding going, you have to get your homework done. And oh, this, is, oh, this is stupid and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and so we are on the same, of course, you know, it's, I'm sure Adam was out of town because, these kinds of things always happen, right? When you're alone right. <laughs> parenting, I don't know. Yes. So um, he had told the doctor he could swallow a pill, but he didn't realize that the pill was going to be a capsule. Capsules apparently are harder to swallow. Okay. And because they float. So we're trying to get this capsule down and he can't do it. I'm like, would you swallow Tylenol? And he's like, well, I bite it in half. And I'm like, oh, that's gross. Yes. But so we're fighting over this. We're fighting over the homework and I am losing my mind. And so I just kind of step away and I'm like, Lord, I don't know what to do. What do I do? And it's like, I heard him say, speak into who he is. Yes. 
And so I said, oh, okay. So I went back to him and said, okay, Luke, I want you to take this medicine, not because I just need you to take the medicine, but because you love to swim and you can't swim when your ears are infected and, and God made you an amazing swimmer and you're great at it. You're like a fish. I want your ears to be well mm -hmm. so that you can swim like God created you to swim. And it's like, he went, huh? Okay. And I said, Luke, I want you to get your homework done and do your best. Not because it makes me feel good that you're making good grades or that it's important to me, but because I see that God has created you that's so smart and you're great at engineering and you're great at building and you have to learn math to go into those fields. So I want you to do this and do it well so that you can be all that God created you to be and that you can have the freedom to be what you want to be. Right. And it was like the tears stopped. The headbutting stopped. Oh, that's he was the worst. Like, okay. And he sat down and did his homework. And I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But that's also giving him an example of the way the Lord works and the way the Lord calls us to be better at, because he sees who we are fully in him. Right. He doesn't see us in this state that we see ourselves in of this we are struggling just to be better he sees us through his son perfected wow. and just wants that's to, heavy when we, when we miss that he just wants to bring us up into that it's not a you know that that god went wagging his finger at us going i can't believe you messed up it's no that's not who you are mm, i guess you're she better Oh, that's so good. It just reminds me of everything you were talking about in John 10. Um, yes. I, I know you were telling us three things that we can do to hear from God. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. And, and I cut you off. So we're, hey, we're back on our Pinterest. Three things you can do to hear yes. from three God. Things. Yes. Three things. Three things. Let's keep it scripture. scripture. Read, read scripture. Mm -hmm. um, pray. Spend time talking with him. And third is worship. And I, worship is still kind of a mystery to me, uh, but it's amazing. And, you know, we tend to relegate that to Sunday morning worship. But if you incorporate worship into your daily life, it will change you. It will change yes. your day. Yes. It will change your attitude. And you know, and you may be out there going, that's great. I don't do music. I'm not musical. I don't sing. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's one type of worship. Yes. You can also worship just with your words. God, you are good. Yes. You are beautiful. You, you know, thank you. We live at the beach. Thank you for the beach, beach. Lord. And yes. you know, to come in with just telling the Lord how grateful you are for him. Gratitude. Thanksgiving. Right now. Uh, yes. Yes. Praise and thanksgiving are the gateway into the Lord's presence. So that's in Psalms. That somewhere. is. Yes. yes. I mean, so, being thankful has changed my life. Like, I know, I don't know why. Maybe you can help me out with this. But the other day I was, or maybe it was this morning, I was, you know, putting a note on my son's diapers for his name. And under his, I was so in that moment, I'm so thankful for our daycare. And I was just like, I just yeah. need to thank whoever is picking up these diapers to change his diaper. Thank you. Yeah. Like God gives us that spirit of gratitude. And I'm not saying that's like the right thing to do, but it's just a feeling that I had. It's like, God makes me grateful for things that other, I don't know. I just feel like when I wasn't a Christian, I wasn't thankful for somebody doing something like that. But now right. it's like, Wow. Like that's from God. The fact that they have a safe, great place to go with wonderful teachers. Like, thank you, Jesus, you know? Right. Um, I don't know. Just gratitude right. is so much in my walk with Christ. What about you? Yes, it absolutely changes everything. Just gratitude and thankfulness. Uh, and kind of during Hurricane Sally got a big taste of this mm -hmm. in that, uh, like I said, we... We live on the other side of the bridge that got taken out. So right. 
Hey girl. We, uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it was my first hurricane, real hurricane that actually hit. And, um, our power was out for three days and for the first two days, I, there was just so much to be grateful for. Right. Like even the power being out, I was so grateful for electricity. I know. I mean, every time I'd flip yes. the switch and nothing happened, I'd be like, Oh Lord, thank you so much that we live with electricity. Yes. And air, I mean, I was sweating my socks off and I'm like, I am so grateful for air. I mean, everything just came out in gratitude. And I think it was really just the Holy spirit in me just moving that way, because that is not necessarily my natural bent, yes. but for two days, like as we are, I mean, I'm like, this is fun. We're seeing our neighbors and chopping down trees. And I mean, we were like that too. Yes. Yes. But other people going, I know. I know. Right. And God and took I care was, of us. Yes. It's so much to be grateful for. And I was just going around going, this is not the worst thing that's ever happened. This is actually kind of fun. And I don't want right. to do it again, but, yeah, no, thank but we're you. making it. Right. And I mean, but then on day three, that kind of went away. And I was like, I just kind of had a, enough of no electricity and, and I couldn't quite wrap my ra- my brain around what to cook. I mean, we have a gas stove, so I was still right. able to cook some stuff. And um, and I'm sitting there going, God, I think I was sitting in the parking lot at Publix going, I just, I can't even figure out what to make for my family. Mm-hmm. Like, we have food. It's right. not that we don't have food. I have a way to cook, and I know how to do it. Mm-hmm. I just can't figure it out. And I kid you not, I got a text from a friend down in Navarre saying, hey, we are like the only house in the neighborhood with electricity, so I'm cooking up food for everybody. Can I bring you dinner? I was like, yes, yes, you can bring me dinner. And I mean, can you imagine? I mean, that's just how good God is. That is literally like how good God is because there are so many different situations and everybody has a different story, but God knows your needs. Like God knows how to take care of those emotions that you're struggling with right now. And you cried out to him. It may be like a small thing where you're just like in the car, Jesus, help me. I, I literally cannot wrap my brain around this. Help me. Or you're just like crying out, you know, maybe you're like screaming Jesus. Yeah. 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 But just crying out to him and knowing that we need his help. Yes. Mm. And he wants to help us. I think that's, that's where I hiccup is going. Oh, but he actually wants to help. He actually wants to answer those prayers. He actually wants me to be dependent upon him. So, so, okay. Back to worship. Certainly back around. Yes. We were talking about Uh, worship. Yes. Worship. Yes. Well, worship, prayer, and scripture. Those are the three ways that you get to know the heart of the Lord and that you get to know how to recognize his voice. And um, and I would encourage anybody, if you do say I'm not a music person or I don't really sing, there's so much great worship music out there. Like, just right. turn it on. Like, give it a try and and see how it's, it just moves your heart. And yes, as you Brooke Frazier. Maybe even listen yes. to the words. Or, yes. And um, yes. the car is a great place for this. I mean, if you have a long commute, put on worship music. And yes. just, it will change your day. It really will. Yes. So, um, so as we get to know the Lord's voice, there are, um, kind of four main ways we hear from him. God talks in a whole lot of different ways. There's, it's just endless because he is so creative, but the way we receive that and the way we hear from him kind of comes down into four categories. Um, and I can recommend a good teaching on this that open my mind for it. Please go for it. Um, Yes. uh, Havila Cunnington is the one who I learned this from. Uh, She does truthtotable.com. And this comes from her teaching called uh, prophetic personalities. And don't get hung up on the word prophetic. Uh, She's just talking about the different ways we hear from the Lord. And the four that she talks about are, and there are people who are, uh, or we hear from it as a knower. Like, you know, it's that I can't, I didn't hear words. I didn't see things. I just know in my knower that the Lord wants this. And that's a valid way of hearing from the Lord. And I think sometimes we push that aside because, well, I didn't hear it. I didn't see it. I just like, I I just know that God 
wants this, that God sees this. And that's valid. Okay. Um, and I think it is maybe even a place that a lot of us start. And um, it's kind of those nudges you're, you were talking about. The, right. Yeah, that's, that's from the Lord. And learning to respond to those nudges is a good thing. Yes. And in fact, one of another good principle is that the more you respond with obedience to what the Lord is telling you, the more you hear it's, it's the, when you steward what he gives you, well, it increases Wow. in every, in every aspect. I needed to hear that. And I pray somebody on the other end did too, because maybe you're waiting on something, you know, yeah. it could be anything. Maybe you're yeah. waiting. Maybe like, you're waiting on the Lord. Yes. So, uh, so knowers, knowers, just knowing they're knower that God said, or God wants kind of thing. Okay. There are, and um, she also talks about feelers. These are the people who like, they just, they feel the heart of the Lord in a situation. Okay. So, um, for example, I've walked into a room, um, and just been overwhelmed by the way that the Lord loved the people in the room. That would be feeling a communication from him okay. or, um, I've known people, this is probably, this one I will say is my weakest way of hearing. I'm, okay. I tend to not be as in touch with my emotions as maybe as healthy. So I don't feel as much from the Lord. Um, yes. So those, but you know, people who, who are strong in this mm -hmm. often get a lot of flack because they are emotional. Like they, they walk in the room and they're just overcome with the love of the Lord. And so they start crying and you're like, why is this person crying? Well, they're feeling the feelings of the Lord and his heart for things. And so that's actually a very beautiful thing. And um, I was in a subway system with a friend years ago and, um, and she, we walked in she goes, oh, do you feel that? And I'm like, no, I don't feel anything. She's like, it is so dark in here. And I'm like, it is dark. The lights are dim. She's like, no, 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 no. Like there's a darkness in here. And I'm like, I don't feel that at all, but we can, I'll pray into it with you. And we, yes. you know, we, kind of prayed for the people in the situation. You have that kind of thing. People who just feel the spiritual. Um, there are the more, the easier ones to talk about um, are hearers. That's, okay. and I tend to be more of a hearer, but I'm also a word person. So that fits with my personality, right? In the package that God made of me is that I do tend to hear words from the Lord. Now we'll, say this is not an external voice. I've never heard a external booming voice from the Lord. I've only heard words in my head that I knew were from him, which, and, you know, I, I would love to say that that is how I hear from him all the time, but it's not. Those are usually big moments and, and ones that I like to tell the stories of over and over again, because they were so impactful. Right. Um, so, and I love that. And uh, then the fourth one would be uh, Sears. And these okay. people see things like, and sometimes, yes, that is, they, they call it an open vision where you actually see it in out. But most of the time it is within your own mind's eye and your imagination. The Lord uses your imagination. And, and I've That's heard so from good. the Lord this way sometimes too. For example, I um, was actually driving to a worship night with a friend and we were talking, it was a long drive and, um, and she was talking about just these amazing experiences that she'd had or how the Lord had overwhelmed her or these other people with this love. And I hear these stories all the time about how God just takes people out with a big rush of how much he loves them. Mm. And it, it changes their life. Right. Right. And I'm like, God, I want that. I have never had that kind of experience from you. And I want that. And I feel a little left out that I'm not getting it. And, um, and I immediately saw in my head, as I'm driving, um, like a, a picture of a giant sequoia tree or redwood. I'm not real sure which one, but a yeah. giant tree. And then along with that came, I guess, words in a way, or just a knowing that the Lord said, I haven't done that for you because I wanted you to grow slow and steady so you would be strong. Yes. I'm like, okay, I'm good. And slow and steady. So you would be strong. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So 
and you know, and usually more will come with it. Like sometimes it'll be, um, oh, when we first moved here, and um, we were driving down to, we were driving a long way to go to church, <laughs> which sounds funny now that we have no bridge. Um, okay. It was probably like a 35 minute drive and in a completely different community, but we didn't know anything else. And, um, and it was, we loved the church and, but there was becoming, it was going to be an issue to get involved, to take okay. the children 30 minutes or, you know, it just, it just felt Oh, I get it. Far. Yes. Well, and, and you don't want to, yeah, you've got to look out for your kiddos. Yes. 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 Well, and then, and they weren't going to know anybody at church from their community, right? Because it's just too far. So I was heading to a life group from this church. I mean, driving through downtown. And as I'm about passing, I think the stadium, um, I heard very clearly in my head, you're going the wrong direction. Oh. I was like, <gasps> right. I mean, it just, and it was like that. I sucked. I kind of panicked a little bit. And I, like I said, when I hear from the Lord this way, it's not a very, just at peace, fuzzy feeling. It is a, oh my goodness, we need action kind of feeling. So I pulled into yes. the Joe Patty's parking lot and called Adam. And I said, God said, we're going the wrong direction. We can't go to this church anymore. Uh, he wants us to be closer to where we live and get more involved in the community. And so, and that was that we didn't go back to that church. It was a great, it's a great church. Right. And later, That's where we got, uh, we learned uh, about the church we're involved in now and have been a great experience here. Or even like our move to Pensacola, we came from Abilene, Texas, and we have a company out here and we had been out here. So Adam could work from this office and um, we'd come back, we'd come for the summer and spent like seven weeks here with him working from this office. And then we came back that December for their Christmas party. And as we were driving, I mean, this is, this should tell you how impactful these moments are. I remember where I was exactly. Like we were driving down airport passing um, like what used to be Gander Mountain. And although it wasn't that then. Right. And, and it wasn't even, this one wasn't even a voice in my head. It was just, I knew in my knower that Pensacola was home and we were supposed to move. At which point I looked at my husband in the car at, look back at the Lord in my heart. And I said, that's great. I'm ready, but you have to tell him because I'm not telling him. <laughs> and so he caught me. I hear the Lord chuckle in my head a lot. He's like, okay. So yes. two months later, Adam walked in the room and said, I think we're supposed to move to Pensacola. And I'm like, yep, yes. I already knew that. Let's glad you're on board. Let's go. I hear about that all the time with husband and wives, how they just like know this yes. or that about big situations. And I, I guess my husband and I are just kind of boring because we're just like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. We just don't get that. But I love that you guys are getting that. But you're praying for that. I'm not praying we're for praying, that. We are. We are both praying for that. We are both okay. always seeking what's the next step from him. Yes. And and we've been doing it a lot of years too together. So, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I think that changes. I mean, we maybe weren't quite that instinct 10 years ago. Okay. But, but also think about it. The Lord is not going to tell me one direction for my family and tell Adam a different direction for my family, mm. because we know from scripture that his will is for us to be a single one unit working yes. together in the same direction. Amen. So, so he's not going to give us two different marching orders that would separate us because he wants unity. Right. So he wants so to make sense. Preach. Yeah. So once again, that goes back to God doesn't tell you anything that contradicts scripture. Amen. That's good. Yeah. That's yeah. good. And like, if you're questioning if it's God or whatever, you know, just look it up. I think one of the big things that's helped me in 2020 was this website called www.openbible.info. And what you do is you put in a word that you're questioning you know, you can say like scripture about, you can Google it, scripture about whatever this thing is. And usually this website will come up as one of the first search results in Google. Um, and you can find out about anything. And I use it a lot for the podcast too. Like people yeah, will be talking about something and I'm like Bible verse Yeah. about, oh, here's my last one. Bible verse about being positive. <laughs> And then it, it, it'll tell you, it has a list. 
1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And then it goes down. There's Philippians 4, 8, Ephesians 4, 29, Psalms 37, 5. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. It's so good. God is such a it's God so of action. Okay. We yes. always ask our guests. This is my favorite. Yes. Um, what is your favorite Bible verse in the season? I love that you said in this season, because yes. if you just say my favorite Bible verse, my brain starts twitching going, I can't, that's like, yeah, no, no, no. Right that's now. my favorite food. I don't know. I like so many of them. Yes. Um, so in this season, and this is very recent for me, uh, just that the Lord highlighted. And that's one of the, can I just, before I. Of course. Go we want to learn, uh, girl. Great things about learning to hear from the Lord and hearing his voice is how it makes scripture come alive. Because when you start to hear the Holy Spirit speaking and you invite him into reading your scripture with you, things come alive in ways that you just can't even, I mean, it is above and beyond all that you can yes. expect. And then, you know, it's one of those verses I've read before, but it just popped this time. And I, uh, it's Psalm 116 verses one and two, which I could also talk forever about the Psalms and how much I love them. Um. Mm -hmm. But in the New Living Translation, it says, I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my prayer for mercy. Because he bends down to listen, I will pray as long as I have breath. Mm -hmm. I just, I love that picture of him bending down to listen. Like, you know, just like a father does with a two-year-old. You don't tower over your two-year-old oh. to listen. Yes you know, you get down on your knees and you look them in the eye. And, and I think that's that picture here of the Lord. Once again, that just that desire of his heart to be close with us. Um, so he, he comes down to our level and hears, I love that because he's listening. I am, I'm going to pray as long as I can, as long as I have breath yes. and make it one of those. I mean, my personal goal is to live each moment of my day acknowledging his presence and being in his presence um not there yet working on it but to to bring him into everything yes which even the little things that you think oh god can't care about this oh but he does oh god he, he loves does. us that much to care about every detail about actually what you wear and what you eat and where you go and how you get there uh, and what you spend your time on. And, and that doesn't mean to say that I have to look like a monk or a nun in a monastery. Those are good lives. Right. That's not the life I'm called to. That means sometimes I talk to the Lord in my head about the TV show I'm watching right. or about the book I'm reading or clearly about how to parent because that's hard as we said yes and or oh man the other day I was um, it was the first time we went to a movie theater this oh, year fun. we actually have been to a movie theater and I kind of was panicking about it like having a anxiety attack in the car really and Adam and my youngest Titus we're so excited to go see this movie. And I'm just like, and I, the way this anxiety is manifesting is I'm starting to get snippy and not be a pleasant person to be around for my family who is trying to have a fun outing. And so I stopped and I said, Lord, what is this? Where is this fear coming from? And reminded myself that fear is not from the Lord. That's mm. another topic I could go into a long time. Fear yes. is not from the Lord. And to remind myself that he is my protector. God is my protector. I don't have to be afraid. Um, so, and just pulling him into that moment and realigning my thought process from whatever was going on around me to who the Lord is and what he has for me. I'm like, that anxiety dissipated just like that. I'm like, all right, Lord, you've got this. Yes. So, yeah. I love it. I love it. I just love that you're seeking him in all your ways. I think that's the big takeaway from this podcast, yeah. from this conversation is like to seek him in all your ways, because I'm sure your job's cool, you know, and I'm sure your family's great. 
I'm sure you have cool friends, you know, invite him into all those spaces, like watch, let him grow them, let him grow yes. them. Yes. Not, and, and you know, and that's one of those things, not just the, the bad things or the things that are falling apart. Right. He still wants to be a part of the good things too. Yes. Um, so, and once again, when you steward what he gives you, well, it just brings increase. There's more of it. It's true. We're not talking about a prosperity Bible. We're talking about a Jesus who wants good for us. Keep it simple. Yes. <laughs> yes. Keep it simple. God yes. wants good so, for you. So encourage each other because God wants good for them too. You yes. Know? So you want to hear more from the Lord. You obey what he's told you. Yes. Um, which also just one little tidbit about, I'm sorry, I'm circling back around. Yeah, um, go for it. There have been seasons in my life where I was hearing clearly from the Lord and all of a sudden it sounded, felt like he went silent. Mm. And there are, uh, the two main things I, I come to that with are one, it could just be, he's trying to teach me to listen in a different way. So I'm open to a new way of hearing from him. Okay. Two, it could also mean that he told me to do something and I didn't do it. And so my next question then to the Lord is, all right, Lord, what have you spoken to me that I didn't obey? And he'll usually bring it back very quickly. And I go back, I do that thing. And it's like floodgates open again. Yes. Um, so uh, I get a prayer, it. prayer that I like to pray. Yes. Lord, open my eyes that I can see you more clearly. Lord, open my ears that I may hear you more clearly. Lord, open my mind that I may understand the things of you. Open my heart that I may feel the way you feel and strengthen my will to obey. Yes. Strengthen my will to obey. Mm, yeah. That's good. Thank you so much. You're um, welcome. Kristen, this has been really fun. This has been a spirit led conversation. Not going to lie. Like there have been so many times in this conversation where I'm like, yes, Lord, like this is, I'm being, I'm in so encouraged right now. And I pray whoever's listening that you feel the same way that you're just encouraged in Christ it's bringing you closer to him because if not, this is meaningless. Like our whole part right. of being here is to encourage you in Christ because we know that with Christ, there's life, there's meaning, yes. there's purpose behind what yes. you're doing right now. There's purpose and it's Jesus yes. Christ and he wants to give you life. <laughs> and it's like so hard to explain, but at the same time, it's not, you know, <laughs> exactly. So, oh my goodness. So, well, at the end of every podcast, I always pray Jesus that we decrease in God, you increase in our lives. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Kristen, for your time. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Kristen Turner at her email, which is Kristen H Turner at gmail.com. And if you want a direct link to it, we have it listed in the description. As always, thank you so much for listening. If you leave us a review, it helps us out so much. And please share this podcast with your friends. We do not have advertisements on Broadcast is Love, but we do want to encourage you to other platforms, other businesses who are using their positions, whatever they may be, to broadcast God's love. So we're ending this episode like we do every episode new this year for 2021 with closing time. Hey, this is Dustin, one of the pastors at Grace Bible Church in Sebring, Florida. Thanks for tuning in to listen to Broadcast His Love with Ricky Van Stewart. I hope you will also consider joining us on our podcast as well. Our hope is to encourage you, inspire you, and compel you towards a closer walk with Jesus and one another. You can find us on every platform where podcasts are offered by simply searching for Grace Bible Church Sebring. Again, this is Pastor Dustin, and I hope to get to connect with you very soon. Hey, this is Mark Stockland, pastor and CEO for Haiti Bible Mission in Jeremy, Haiti. If you'd like to follow along with what we're doing in Jeremy, Haiti, you can check us out at HaitiBibleMission.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We'd love to get you guys connected with what we're doing in Jeremy, Haiti, and how you can partner with us to live the difference, to help empower leaders to transform communities. God bless you guys, and have a great day. Hi, y'all. This is Nan Charland, the owner of the Laurel Oak Inn Bed and Breakfast in Gainesville, Florida. You can find the Laurel Oak Inn on the internet at laureloakinn.com or Facebook and Instagram, Laurel Oak Inn. Until we meet you in person, we certainly hope you're enjoying life to its fullest.